So hey folks and welcome back to another video and on today's video we're actually on our last ride and final thoughts on the 2022 Triumph Speedmaster Gold Line Edition. So welcome back folks and it is the last ride before it goes back to Triumph and with every Triumph that I get I always uh, tend to say it's a shame to see it go back but on this one actually um, I'm not too bothered now with most Triumphs that I do get I like them all on this one I do like it but it has some things I don't like and I'll run through those in this video for you okay so on to the bad points or the things that I don't like about this bike and number one being the swept back bars I would much rather have the straight bars that came on the uh, the Triumph bobber that we had on the channel a couple of weeks ago so they just for me it feels a little bit weird to have them swept back like this and while it is the classic position of the Speedmaster um, it's something that I think if I own this bike then I would change that uh, and the uh, the second thing is the suspension on this is a lot more softer as standard than the actual bobber I found that on uh, some of these roads uh, the suspension to be a little bit wallowy and it uh, kind of booked you out the seat a little bit on some of the uh, the bumps whereas the bobber was pretty firm and uh, I much prefer that one you do have rear preload adjustment on this bike whereas the bobber didn't uh, but still the suspension was better on the bobber so uh, yeah non-adjustable forks on the front it's made for cruising it's not made for uh, for these types of roads I don't think now the third thing that I'm not fond of is the feet forward position and I did touch the pegs down on a corner and it kind of unsettled me and dug in a little bit which I wasn't happy about uh, now I think out of all the Triumphs this is the uh, the only one that I've had uh, quite a few negatives on so the fourth thing just a little niggle is when you look at the beautiful wheels that are on this bike the chromed spoke 16 inch wheels so the valve stems on the wheels are straight up they're not angled valve stems and with them being a 16 inch wheel and also you've got that uh, 320mm disc on the front there's not a lot of room to actually get a air pressure gauge in there to actually check your tyres and blow your tyres up so uh, I've seen a lot less money motorcycles cheaper end of the market have angled valve stems on them so I think it should be something that should be put on every bike these days and then that's about it really so there's four dislikes now then what do I like about this bike well the looks are outstanding it looks the part especially in this beautiful silver and black and the gold line hand painted tank with a gloss black frame mug guards and side panels I just think it looks the business I even love how the uh, indicator arms and housings are in the same gloss black as well and not chrome so that's number one the looks number two is the engine this 1200 high torque engine is the best parallel twin engine on the market now I say the best uh, because it has also the 900 high torque engine that you get in the street scrambler and the street twin and also that is a superb engine too in fact I would probably take the 900 engine over the 1200 engine just because it's it's more manageable uh, there's a lot of power in this 1200 engine and I think it's a little bit much for some of the range especially this one um, the other thing I like item 3 is the switch gear on the the triumphs especially the Bonneville range it's very good uh, it's very tactile and uh, they seem to have everything in the right place and on the bobber and on this on this model you've got that one touch cruise control which I like some people don't want cruise control but I think on most bikes these days it's just electronics it's in the ECU put it on the bike 
use it or don't use it, but at least it's optional and it's there. Uh, I know on Triumph's accessory store you can get it as an optional extra on some bikes, but not all of the range. So that would be number four, the switch gear. I think number five, and although I mentioned about the suspension being wallowy and a little bit soft on this bike, uh, every Triumph that I've uh, come across, the chassis and the handling of the, the ranges that they do have always been really good. They're always great handling bikes and you have no issues. And, uh, and I would say the last item that I love about Triumphs is that they use quality components. You know, you've got Brembo brakes, you've got everything from Showa forks on some models, and then you've got Olin's on other models. So yeah, top quality components go into their motorcycles, which is great, and uh, I don't think it's reflected too much in the pricing of their motorcycles. I think their pricing's pretty spot on uh, for today's market. And just the, the quality and the fit and finish of the bikes is second to none. So they're, they're on to a winner, and I think they'll do very well again in 2022, which seems to be a, a classic or a modern classic bike market and an adventure bike and a naked bike market. The days of sport bikes have uh, long gone, in my view, my book, and you can have more fun on something like uh, the Triumph classic range than you can on a sport bike these days. So I mentioned the switch gear, also you know as standard you've got adjustable clutch and brake levers, it's just got all, all the gizmos that you can ever need. Simple, practical, precise, and that's what you want really from motorcycling. Simple ABS, you do have traction control, and when I was going under a bridge on the, uh, the first ride, I actually noticed that even though I was opening up the gas, the back wheel was spinning on the moisture that was uh, through the tunnel, and uh, yeah, it kicked in. So you've got traction control, ABS, two rider modes, you've got road and rain, and in fact I've just noticed I'm in rain, and it must have been in rain all the time that I've had this bike, because I've never swapped it over, so uh, let's just... See if we can change the modes. Yep, you can change them. I have my clutch in, off throttle. Okay, so now we've got full beast mode. So yeah, even in the uh, the rain mode, the performance of the engine is superb. And now we're in road mode, a little bit more responsive. But it's simple, you've got rain and road, simple as that. If it's raining, stick rain mode on. It's more intrusive on the traction control than the road mode but with the roads being dry today we'll keep it in road for now now this pretty much completes the Bonneville whole range and lineup that we've tested so far uh, we do have a playlist that we put all of our Triumph test rides first rides and last rides and final thought videos on and I'll put a link in the top right hand corner just here now and in there you've got everything from the Street Twin, uh, Street Scrambler, you've got the T100, the T120, uh, you've got the Bobber, you've got now the Speedmaster, and also the, uh, the epic Triumph Thruxton that we took out last year that was in a uh, jet black. It was absolutely gorgeous. What a gorgeous bike that was. So head over to that playlist, go and check them out if you're looking at a Triumph and undecided which one to buy. I hope I can share my personal insights into reviewing and, and testing these bikes. Now we normally have these bikes for a uh, minimum of 10 days, uh, sometimes two weeks, to get out and test them. And uh, certainly we, uh, we put a few miles on them and you can really get a good understanding of what these bikes are about in that time. So what have we got coming up on the channel next? Well, we've got the Tiger 660. Now we tested the Tiger 850 and the Tiger 900 uh, last year, at the end of last year. Again, they're in the playlist. And uh, really, really great adventure bikes, very popular with the market. And we've got the 660. 
which shares the same engine as the Triumph Trident, which we also tested last year. And actually, that Trident was one of my favourite bikes last year. So, uh, yeah, that's coming up on the channel after this one. And we'll put that through its paces and give it a good test and uh, tell you what we think. But from uh, all the reviews I've seen on it so far, it's a real uh, corker of a bike, so stay tuned for that one. And then a little later on in July, uh, we'll try and get some other... Uh, gold line series uh, before that but uh, I know definitely in July we've got the Street Triple RR so the half fared version of the RS with the fully semi-active Olins so I'm really looking forward to getting that bike now we're just at Devil's Bridge which is a famous uh, haunt locally in Lancashire just over the bridge just there uh, you got uh, hundreds of bikes there at the weekend. Nice uh, ice cream van, nice buddy van. So it's well worth a, uh, a visit if you're up in this region. Just on the left, just there. So yeah, that's it. That's our last ride before she goes back. Thanks for tuning in. And if you're not a subscriber to the channel, then uh, hit that subscribe button and uh, ding that bell for future videos coming up and we'll catch you on another one soon cheers guys <laughs>